Hello, hello, goodbye, and hello again. It's time for more retro handheld gaming tat review. This time, the R Zone from Tiger Electronics, which the company excreted out of its corporate anus back in 1995. Right, fairly big handheld thing, directional pad, button marked A, button marked B, button marked C, button marked D. Not getting too technical, am I? Also, a horrible row of buttons you can't reach properly when you're playing with on, start, select, sound, pause, off. I like the sound of the off myself. Around the back, batteries go in. How many batteries does it take? Too many, of course. And that's about it, except for the cartridge slot. Or is it? No, it isn't. There's something else horrible I'll show you in a moment. The games look like this. That's right, they've got a big hole in them. Why is this? Because that is actually the screen the game appears on. The R-Zone itself just provides the controls, and presumably the processing, and shines light through it, which is then reflected off a mirror and into your eyes where your brain tells you it's crap. Allow me to demonstrate. Cartridge goes in here. Cartridge comes out because I've put it in backwards. Cartridge turns around. Notice it's got a sticker on both sides. Cartridge goes in here. That's better. Light comes on. Beep start. <coughs> Pull open the mirror. And there we go. This is what an R-Zone game looks like. This one is Imperial Assault, one of the many Star Wars themed games they somehow got a license for. Let's press start and see what happens, shall we? No, let's not. Oh, all right then, let's go. A horrible noise. Um, oh, it's the tie. No, it's next wing. Oh, I'm in a tie fighter. I think shooting. Oh, yes, there we are. Every time I press the button, some little lines shoot across the screen. Sometimes there's a beep. This is like virtual cop for the mentally incapable. It's horrible. Come on, hit something. Yes, there we are. It exploded and I got 50 points. And all I lost was my dignity. Come on. Let's shoot some more lines, which move incredibly slowly. Let's some X-Wings, which are jerking badly across a screen. Do try to ignore the flashing focus light on my camera, by the way. I apologise for that. Oh, dear. I don't think I can take much more of this. Oh, and the game's over. That's handy. Right, next one. Off. Out. Away. Next is... Oh my goodness, Virtua Fighter. Oh dear, this is going to be bad, isn't it? Ah, here we go. Well, I can't actually see anything happening at the moment. Let's press start, that might help. Good lord, the music! Oh, it's horrible. It's like a giant spider running across a keyboard or something. Completely random notes. Oh, select. Oh, here we go. Ah, this is how you select your fighter. Some fighters will only appear on a certain side of the screen. And I can't really make any difference between all of them. Some of them stand as if they're about to crack their pants. Some of them stick their arms out. All of them have bad hair. Right, apparently this is Jackie. He has a haircut like Bart Simpson, so we'll have him for humorous effect. Start. Ah, that's better, the music stopped. Right. Ah! That's even more random now. Oh. What is going on? This is the jerk fest. Ah, oh, this is horrible. What's happening? It's an arm flying up in the air. Is that block? I think so. Ooh, all you can do is walk across the screen and kick him in the nuts. I like the sound effects though, very meaty. It's the only positive thing I've seen so far. What happened there? I sort of flew around a bit. Oh dear, oh dear. How anyone could stand just listening to the music, let alone playing the game, I'm completely incapable of understanding. This is like the collection of ringtones from a madman. Ah, oh, enough. Oh. Dear, oh dear. If you have the 360 version, don't bother getting this one. And lastly, another Star Wars game. Jedi Adventure. Ugh. Right, let's hope some lightsaber action at the very least. And that was the Star Wars theme, apparently. Do bear that in mind. Right, there's random objects on the screen that look like little broken things. Is this one not working or something? Start. Oh, nope, here we are. It's Luke. Oh, I see. One button shoots forward, one shoots backwards. He seems to have thrown away his lightsaber in... Well, just thrown it away and bought a couple of guns, really. Oh, hang on. One button moves you forward. 
Ah, here we go. Uh, right, we've got this game down path already. Keep pressing to the wrapping to the right, he walks to the right. Little things go past. Occasionally a git appears. Press the button, git disappears. This game isn't very challenging. Or interesting. This is really all there is to it. Can't take much more repetitive sound effects. Same enemy all the time. Nothing actually happens. Oh, oh man, my head. I think I actually passed out through boredom there. Good grief. Actually, it might just be a headache from the horrible music. I don't know. Well, there we are. That is the XPG from our zone from Tiger Electronics from Hell. Uh, really, I should have looked at the name before I started reviewing it to get a clue as to what's happening. XPG. Extreme Pocket Game. Well, it's technically a game, I suppose. It wouldn't fit in anybody's pocket, and they've spelt extreme wrong. I think that just sums about the whole thing up, really. No, I'll tell you what sums the whole thing up better. Our zone? Arse zone, more like. Absolute crap. And probably horribly expensive at the time. I actually have two more games for it. Rebel Forces and Batman and Robin. Surely can't be as bad as the film. Well, actually, after seeing the other games, maybe so. Uh, if you particularly want to see them reviewed for some reason, I'll stick them on my extras website after I've had a few drinks of gin or a thousand. Yeah. <laughs>